It's excellent. Well, we're just waiting for it all to kick off live. Hi, everyone. We are live on the webinar. How many million times have I said that? And I have got Paresh with me on this webinar as well. Before I introduce him, let's have you guys introduce yourself. So tell me who you are, where you're from. Let me just move that across a bit more so you can see me better. Uh, so tell me who you are, where you are from, and those kinds of things. And uh, if you're a beginner or experienced, uh, and also I'm going to, during all of this, publish some polls, questions that I'm going to ask you. So as you all introduce yourselves in the chat box, I'm going to introduce Paresh. Now, Paresh, I first met shortly after, well, he was a floor trader on the Financial Futures Exchange. He then put in all the strategies for a hedge fund called Marble Bar Asset Management, which ran into billions. He uh, has co-authored many of my books with me. And uh, he's online, and he's going to talk about some of the trading strategies as well. We've got Peter from Felix Doe, Carl from UK and Experience. Dave, oh, they're all coming in. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, good. So, Parish, do you want to introduce yourself slightly? And I'm going to, as you do that, start sharing the screens. Parish is also going yeah. to keep an eye on the Q&A. I will. There and you go. I'll be watching on, on the chat as well. Yeah, so, so carry on. I Thank you, Alpish, for the introduction. I'm Paresh. As I said, I used to be a live tr uh, trader on life when it existed. Uh, it doesn't anymore. And uh, I evolved into stock trading in the in mid-90s, 1996, and developed a hedge fund strategies in 1999. And been doing a bit of everything since then in terms of trading and investment. Um, and it's great to see some familiar faces uh, or names on the chat already. So, yeah, I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon. Perfect. And I've just put on the agenda on there. So for those coming in a little bit late, welcome. Grab a comfortable chair and something to drink. I'm just going to lower my desk slightly because I think I'm too high up. Let's see if I can lower it. There we go. That's a bit better. And uh, so grab that. There's the agenda. Some important information, sort of disclaimers as it were. This is not individual financial advice because we don't know your personal circumstances. I can't give you individual financial advice. If you've got questions as we continue, do ask Paresh, because he's going to come on to the, the chat, but he's also going to keep an eye on the chat box for me. And look, we're going to talk. Let's just start off with the markets. It's been a phenomenal, crazy year. And of course, when you're investing, you're buying and holding. And if you've got a crazy year like this, where the NASDAQ's up 55% and the S&P's up, what, 25%, it's an easy year. The reason for trading, as I'm going to show you later, is you want to try and do better than if you were just buying and holding. And, of course, the markets don't just always go in one direction. So you've got the, uh, the S&P 500 here. And, of course, the upside bet, and I'll explain what all of these things on here mean, you know, to go long and buy there and buy here and short here and go long here. It's always been on, it's been on the long side this time. The reason you're also trading is because you would, put in more money or more leverage, whether you're using options, CFD, spread bets, or just cash products, doesn't matter what you're trading, doesn't matter which brokerage, you would put in more money than you normally would if you were buying and holding because you know you're going to hold it for a short period of time and you're watching it like a hawk. In other words, all your eggs are in one basket and you're watching the basket, as Warren Buffett would say. So you're trading short term in order to put more capital in and thereby get more gains. So you're spending more time. So that's what compensates you with bigger returns. You're spending more time. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to discuss in this, well, how do you know when to enter? And this is the S&P right now. And look, it's a one-way bet. So we're, we're long on it, like just about everybody else. We got the, the signal uh, a couple of hours ago uh, on the S&P 500. And uh, uh, the yellow line is where the stop loss is. I'll explain all of that. The entry, how does that get uh, how do you find that out? And when do you know to add to a winner? So we're going to discuss all of those things in this webinar and also a business plan for how much money uh, one might make, you might make. Uh, and the reason for that is what's the point of doing it if you can't make the money? So here's an example. And the principle we're going to go by is if you can grab a 100, then surely you can grab a 1,000. If you can grab a 1,000, then surely you can grab two. And two, you can do four. So we're going to start off uh, with that simple principle and also... If a coin is 50-50, then can we just nudge it 
using whatever edge we can to be a little bit better than a coin. We're never going to be 100% right or 90 or 80. We might get a winning streak and be right seven times out of 10 or eight or nine, but that's a streak just as a coin can have a streak. We're going to talk about, can we just consistently be just a bit better than a coin uh, and to make more money and how might we do that? Okay. Hey, Mitten, hi and hi everyone. So that's the principle of what we're talking about. We're keeping it relatively simple because it's a retail audience. And by the way, the platform, for those of you who've been on my webinars before, you know this is a free platform, uh, free for life. It's MT4. Everyone's heard of it. And the, the data is live, real time and free. And that's why we use it because it's live, real time and free. And I want people to have things which are free. I started doing that from when I was writing in the Financial Times, telling people, you want to get free stuff if you can. And so that's what I like about the platform. And the kind of trading we're going to talk about, just the one type, momentum trading in this. And I will show you a momentum trade, by the way, I should say, uh, momentum trading is, and I've written about it in all my books, including international bestsellers that published by the Financial Times. Momentum trading is you being this guy. Okay, you're being that guy. Uh, and this is the market or Goldman Sachs, whoever you want. And we're just riding their coattails. We're riding the trends. We're riding their trends. That's all we're going to talk about. There's lots of different ways to trade. Now, in this webinar, yes, we will discuss other things like I've got Euro, US dollar up. I've got S&P 500. I've got Apple. I've got Sterling Yen. I've got Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Brent crude oil, Euro dollar, Tesla, and the FTSE. I've got a lot of stuff up. Uh, and we will discuss those during the course of the webinar. But this is very much about trading. Uh, hi, Joe from New York. Fantastic. We've got somebody from the US. Got a lot of people from the UK, somebody from the US. For those coming in a little bit late, remember, I've just asked where you're from. Let me know. Uh, okay. And for those who've missed the slides, this isn't individual financial advice. That's the itinerary. That's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to talk about today. So take a quick gander of that. And I'm going to bring Parash in in a second to talk about how he trades and he put all the strategies into uh, what's now a multi-billion dollar hedge fund which he helped set up back in when did you set up marble bar 1999 99 god and i met you in 99 i think as well right. uh, as a result of that so that's what we're going to do uh, and we're going to talk about that. Now, I know why people are here. I love showing this slide. I don't know this broker, okay? And so don't take that as an endorsement. I don't know who the hell they are. But I remember finding this many moons ago when I was writing one of my books. And uh, uh, I remember seeing this thinking, oh, well, bloody hell, that's why people are trying to trade. We are not going to be millionaires from trading. 70% of people lose money. 70 to 80% of people, depending on which broker you go to, lose money trading. So why does anybody bother doing it? Well, because they want to get into the 30%. And if you think about it, if you set up an entrepreneurial business, uh, so you set up any business, 90% fail within three years of businesses. Whereas with trading, okay, 30% are making money. Uh, so if you could get into that 30%, as I say, it depends on the broker. Some it's 20%, some it's 30%. If you could get into that number, then you're starting out without any cost other than your trading capital you're not you don't have warehouses staff to pay uh, you don't have insurance policies all of those kinds of things uh, uh, so i think it's better than any other business which is why i got into it uh, all those many moons ago we've got anthony as well hi anthony my friend from uh, toronto uh, as well Vrund from gujarat fantastic i'm going to be i'm just talking about gujarat because i'm just booking flights for february uh, so that's why people do it. Please don't be fooled into thinking you're going to make a million. I might as well stand here and say, hey, you know, somebody won 14 million in the lottery last week. You should fill in the lottery. It doesn't work like that. OK, uh, we're not even going to go for this average profit from the top 100 traders, because that is this broker sort of tricking people. I mean, that is the truth for that broker. But how do you know they don't have a million bloody clients? And they picked the top 100 who randomly managed to do that on average. Maybe one of them got a million. The other one's got 10 pounds each. So, you know, forget that number. What we're going to try and do is say we're going to start off where you're making nothing. Yeah, I know. Not what you were expecting in this webinar. You're going to start with a demo account. Okay, and I'm going to give you the process to try things. So you can't risk any money. And then when you're consistently profitable on that, you start with the smallest amount that a broker will allow. So you're only risking 10, 20 pounds loss on a given trade. And we'll talk about that in a second. You might say, that's so bloody boring. Well, why are you in a rush to lose money? I mean, if you want to lose money, feel free to wire it to Parrish if you wish. If you just want to give money yeah. away and throw it around. It but is what good. I suggest is we start with a demo account, smallest 
uh, account size. And then we're going to try and get to about a thousand, well, 500 to a thousand a month, some months more, some months less. And that's when you know, okay, now it's something which could be worth doing. Because if you can make, if you've got the skills to make 500, you can make a thousand, if you can make a thousand, you can make two, if you can make two, you can make four. But we're starting with nothing. You're going to start with nothing because I don't want anybody risking real capital because it would be stupid. Given that I just told you 70 to 80% lose money. And if you've not been on my webinar, then you certainly shouldn't be risking real money until you've finished the webinar anyway. Okay, so I'm going to share with you strategies which. Um, that was one we both wrote, wasn't it, Paresh, this book? Yeah, that is, yeah. Yeah, that's one that one Paresh and I both wrote together. Um, he wrote half of it. I wrote half of it. He put all the strategies that he put into the hedge fund into it, uh, some of which I still don't understand, all that Japanese bunt stuff, Paresh. That's not in that one. But that, that, is, one. that is all you. Uh, and I put in the strategy I'm going to discuss today. But I'm only going to discuss one key strategy, which is momentum. Uh, so that was when we had the book launch a while back. Uh, organized by my lovely wife. That that was the former CEO of Barclays UK. He's now moved on uh, to head up. He's now the CEO of, uh, I forgot which bank, actually, a major bank in India. So what I'm going to teach you in this webinar, everything I'm going to teach you, Mike from Barbados, stop it. Uh, he's in Barbados, for God's sake. I'm, I'm envious. Uh, everything I'm going to teach you in this is from not only what I and Parish do, okay? I was never a floor trader, though. So he's actually more experienced than I am because he was actually a floor trader. I never was. I've only been doing it on computers. Uh, uh, it, and also what I did when I wanted to get into trading was, as some of you will know from my story, uh, I interviewed 10 of the world's leading traders, which was then published in that book. And I'll give you a link to download a free copy of that book at the end of the webinar. And my mentor appears in that book as well. Well, that's how I met Parish. So David Kite was uh, the fifth, per well, the first person I interviewed, and he was chapter five. And David Kite was uh, Kite Securities. He's on the rich list and stupidly yeah. wealthy. So I met David. He was one of the people I interviewed. But I also interviewed this chap who a couple of years ago was hedge fund manager of the year. Back in 1997, when I first met him, he uh, had been, he'd just set up his own hedge fund and he'd been global head of foreign exchange trading at Salomon Brothers. And his chairman was Warren Buffett, who I've never met, by the way, but Warren was chairman of Salomon's when uh, uh, Bill was global head of forex trading. And Bill was in the book, as were 10 other leading traders. And I took their strategies and then that's how I got into trading. Okay. I mean, I was doing it a bit willy nilly up till then, but it was only once I met them that I got in. And did it properly. Now, now, how accurate can uh, this all this mo momentum trading malarkey be? Now, the reason I'm showing you the last month of 2022 is because, of course, we are now in the last month of 2023. And 2023 has been a one-way bet on the markets, of course, if you bought and hold, held. But this is, you see that? That's 15-minute bars. Each one of these are 15-minute bars. And you might think, well, wait a minute. If the S&P is up 25%, that's fine by me. And NASDAQ's up 55% this year. Why should I bother trading and try to make more? Well, for this reason, this is live real-time charts right now. Uh, so that's the S&P 500, okay? Uh, and we're long, all right? We're long as of this afternoon. We're short for a while and it was pointless being short because nothing came of it and didn't really make anything on that, uh, on the short. And you can see the market's just going nuts. But you might say, well, why should you bother? Well, because 2022 is a more typical month and year, which is why I want to show you this. And this is actually encapsulate why people bother trading. So we had a down momentum one there, which didn't make money. Look, that was a losing trade. This was an up signal, didn't make money. Oh, great. Thanks, Arpesh. You're finding us new ways of not making money. That didn't make money because that went sideways. Then, so that's three losing trades on a row. Then, boom, nice big trend up. Then another one, call that losing, even though it's sideways. Then another big gain. Then another big gain. Then another big gain. Then another uh, medium gain. Then another big gain. That is both typical and not typical. I'll tell you what's typical in this. Having three consecutive losing trades, typical, can happen anytime. Having a few big wins, typical. What's not typical is having a series of consecutive big wins. One, two, three, medium, four, five. Now, actually, if you look at this, from the 16th of November to about the 9th of December last year, the price went zero. The S&P 500 went sideways. That is typical of the S&P. So that's typical. So why do people trade? 
Because even if you bought and held and you made nothing, then through trading, you made more. How much more? Well, we'll go through the business plan in a second. So I'm explaining to you why people bother trading when 70 to 80% lose money, according to the brokers. Uh, and those are 70 to 80% who are just not trained. I mean, they're just not trained up. So we're going to train you. And the way to train you is this, S-E-L-M-M-A. All right, that's how we're going to break everything down. Can we just go back to a uh, slide with the trades on? I just want to mention one more thing. This we, one? No, the, yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, so if you look on the, uh, the far left and you look at the smaller losses, this is precisely how um, professionals would behave. So they don't mind taking a few hits, which are very tiny, and then wait for the bigger moves to happen. And there's there's uh, that should be part of your trade plan, something that a lot of people ask me when I'm talking on them talking to them is how do you make that happen you've got to create that plan so you've literally got in the trade and then the rest happens on paper so whatever you say on your plan on your trade plan is exactly what you should execute so the stop is wherever it is you move the stop up accordingly blah blah but we can go into that sort of detail on a one-to-one -one. but anyway that's what i want to add carry on no thank you i actually that's that's a very good uh, uh point um that you make because actually and by the way i'm just as i'm speaking i'm just looking at amazon uh, as well. And it is, of course, you know, it's been an investor's market this year that can't last. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, uh, because, you know, the trades have been one way. And when we first set up the hedge fund in 2004, 2005, actually, we did very little work, because it was all back then it was research in motion, we bought Apple and research in motion. And it was just, I think 2006 was the year where it was we were fully launched, it was just all going in one direction actually you have bloody nothing to do and you got to take 20 percent of other people's profits for that but those are not typical years so this is not typical where you, you can see the entry there and it's just up and up and up and up and the reason i say this is because i think for 2024 we should get back to more normality which is what you see on screen and that's why you want to add to your investment gains with a bit of trading gains if you've feel confident enough to do it to feel confident enough you need a bit of knowledge this is the knowledge and we're going to break this down. This is the pit. This is what you want to take a picture of, everyone. Okay. Uh, and then the next slides, you perish by the way. So the way I tell people, I encapsulate everything in one slide. Okay. Where do we get the data from? Like I said, M MT4. I don't care which broker you're with, as long as they are regulated in the UK or Australia, you can trust as well. Germany, you can trust. Never Cyprus, never Malta, never Gibraltar. No Cyprus, Malta, or Gibraltar, okay? Unless you want to go home crying because uh, they'll just steal your money and you'll never see it again, right? So MT4, uh, that's all fine. We're going to buy at one price and sell at another, and it's like a supermarket. If you can buy at 10 and sell at 20, you've made 10, all right? So what are the numbers? Now, the remember it was Selma. That's what we're looking at. So let's start with the S in Salma, stop losses. And this is probably the most important thing for me. One, volatility-based stop loss. What that means is wherever your entry is, and we'll come to how we get that entry in a second, because that's the most difficult, important part. So I'll come to that in a second. Your stop loss is based on the volatility of the market. Now, that can be by eye. It can be by experience. It can be a recent uh, resistance or support. For me, it's about 2.7 times average true range. You don't have to know what that is, but if you want to look up ATR average true range, entirely up to you. Uh, but it's volatility based. So the more volatile the market, in other words, this range, how high, uh, how up and down these are moving over the last 14 periods, let's say they were moving up and down 10 points, you would put this 27 points away. Okay, simple as that. Simple as that. Now you might say, well, should it be 29 or should it be 28? How do you know? It doesn't matter. We're pragmatic. We're not ideological with this. Okay, so that's your volatility-based stop loss. Why is that ingenious? Well, it means if the market conditions are more volatile, you don't risk losing more money. I'll tell you, I'll explain that in a second. Your stop loss is further away. You're less likely to be whipsawed out. If the markets are less volatile, your stop loss is nearer and you can actually risk more money because the markets are less volatile. The second thing you do is volatility-based position sizing. That means stop loss further away, position size is smaller. Stop loss closer, closer, position size is larger. Why? Well, because if the stop loss is further, you don't want to risk losing more money. You only want to risk losing the same amount of money, whatever the volatility is. So that's why volatility with position sizing. We get the computer software to do it for us. Well, actually, I created this for my team in the fund originally back in the day. Um, and then 
uh, somebody had a bright idea. Why don't you make the software available? So this, we just do the calculation, but you can do the calculations in your head, okay? It's just like a calculator. You can use a pen and paper if you wish, and you can use a calculator and we do it. Volatility-based stop loss, volatility-based position size. Number three is adding to winners. Now, that's an advanced strategy that we learned from the hedge funds. Well, I learned from the hedge funds. Uh, Parrish will talk about uh, his experiences in a second. And that's where you add to winners, okay? And that's because if that's down there, okay, the mirror reflection of that is this. Now, this is really easy. You say to your broker, oh, I've got a signal. And how do you know that you're ever going to get a signal? Simple. You scan, about, I'll tell you how many instruments in a second, 12 to 24 instruments, about 10 minutes a day. You find one good trade off the back of that, i.e. where there's a signal, which usually pops up. And the one will pop up while we're on air here as well, I suspect. Uh, uh, okay, so let's say you're watching all of these. You find one when you scan the markets for 20, um, 10 minutes a day, 10, 15 minutes a day across 12, 25 instruments. And... You say to the broker, right, buy now. Here's the stop loss. Easy to calculate. I just told you, volatility-based. Okay. And also, Mr. Broker, if you were advanced, you'd say when the price gets to this, so you place a order, a limit order, if the price gets to this, buy some more. But that's an advanced thing. You don't need to worry about it at the moment. And it has its own stop loss here. Uh, we just get the computer telling us all of that. Okay. The computer just tells us all of that. Right. So that's adding to winners. And I want you to write this down. Winners add to winners. Now, losers add to losers. Never add to your losing position. Your stop loss is trailing. In other words, when this price goes up here, this goes up there. And it's a momentum-based entry. So I'll talk about momentum in a second uh, and how we get that entry. That is it. Now, before I hand over to Parish to do his few slides, what I want to say is, so let's look at a live example, the S&P 500. That was the entry, and I'll tell you how we get to entries in a second. That was the stop loss, and if you look at it, wonderful. Look, we didn't get whipsawed out, because even though the market fell after we got in, how often does that happen? A lot. Of course, it doesn't go in the direction I want it to immediately. It then went up and up and up and up, and that's fine, and this stop loss would move to that level, and we were able to add to the winner there, and therefore, by this stage, we had two positions, one here and one at this. We had a stop loss, which had moved to this. And then currently the stop loss will be trailing this price. And if I go to sleep, it'll take me out uh, according to that stop loss. And that's uh, job done, basically. Let's look at, that's Microsoft. Now, again, it's a bit silly this month because it's been untypically everything goes up. So it's been a bit easier. But even when the market moves in one direction, the advantage of, of trading is you can do a larger size than you would if you were buying and holding. If you were buying and holding, you'd never put 10 million pounds on a, on a position, okay? You might put 10 pounds on because you're buying and holding and you might lose 10 pounds. Whereas if you're trading and you know you're watching that trade, you can put a large position on and make an outsized gain because you're watching it like a hawk, knowing in this case where the initial stop is, where the entry is, this is where you add to winners and this stop moves up and up and up as the price moves up. And you just tell the broker, I want a trailing stepped stop loss. Um, Parish, you now take that and add a few extra things, don't you? Explain to everybody how you do it. I do, I, I do actually. And a lot of people have asked me how I particularly use uh, PIP. So I, I, I would wait for the signal, of course, but I like to probability stack in my favor. And uh, one thing about moving averages is that they are used by the institutions and the ones I look it's at. It's actually people find difficult. You know, I sometimes get people saying, "Oh, you're using you're using MACD. You're using stochastics. Why aren't you using I don't know nuclear physics?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm not using that, but this works more times than uh, than most. But anyway, the, so I've I've given I'll push three slides. I'll try and explain it, and I use slightly longer term. Um, time frame simply because I have other things to do. Firstly, I like taking my dog for a walk. So that's one of the reasons I like to sort of not be in front of the screen all the time. But this is the this was taken today, and this was the USD Swiss. And two things here. So people have asked me why do we post what we post on on the Pips Telegram channel with and and it's already made money. So this may have been posted, yeah. Right on the pips. If you forget the uh, moving averages for a second, this might have been posted, for instance. Yeah, and all we're saying is we've just found a trend, and you may want to keep that on your watch list for the day for the for next the one. next signal. 
exactly and this is the next signal and this is what happened yeah but that that aside that's an independent story. so me using the moving averages is typically i'd look at two the 200 and institutions would say that anything below the 200 i would oh Paris, i should explain you use the same entry you know the the indicators yeah. that i'm talking about and you're overlaying this you're not only using no average. exactly i wouldn't i wouldn't system. exactly my first entry point is subject to pips actually pinging yeah i would get that signal right because it's all about probability stacking for me okay. so making sure that the probabilities of me making a wise decision in going long or short isn't my decision solely it's not my emotions it is mechanically done yeah, so I take the emotion out of it and that allows me. So, for instance, this this particularly this second signal looked particularly interesting because it's just broken through the 200. Yeah, we had one uh, short signal. This short signal is super interesting. So I, I being a being more experienced, I actually got in uh, exactly when this broke here, the second one, because I don't think the remember point. they can't see. Yeah. Oh, they can't see. OK. They can't, can't see your see. mouse on the screen, just so you know. Uh, Remember, I told you last I time. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can do it. Can I control? No, I can't. Okay. On the right hand side, yeah, there, where you're pointing. <laughs> yeah, exactly there. Yeah. So that second signal, yeah. Yeah. The one before then, as it broke through the 200, yeah, it looked really interesting. So when that second signal yeah. came in, I was in. Okay. But yeah. being a, so you saw great. the price move below the 200-day moving average, which is right. this. This is 200. I'll just write 200 so everybody knows. That's yeah. 200. When you see that break in, you're waiting and waiting because you're thinking, okay, there's going to be downward pressure. Then when you see this, you're looking I mean, to get in. And that sort of stacks the probabilities because you have that probability plus that. Exactly probability. right. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, exactly. And that is how I, I play the game. And then I use the 20 to basically – decide when I actually get in second time. So as you, if you look to the right where it's rallied back after the signal, yeah, and it's uh, touching the two, uh, the 20, yeah, I probably, I, I, I would have got in there with a stop at cost where the original entry was, yeah? So that's right. how I do it. Okay, well, so let's look at another one. Yeah, let's look at another. Now, this is a shorter time frame, I think, on the US. That's the one hour. This was yeah, the one, one day. Hour. This is the one yeah. hour. And exactly the same same thing happened. So it went. This looked even more interesting simply because, um, as I said, I would have got in uh, at the short signal, the first one. This one? Yeah, on the left hand side. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Because yeah. it broke through with such force on the 200. Yeah. That any signal yeah. that was going to show me short, I would have got involved in. Yeah. Yeah. So that broke through, and then you're on high alert. Exactly. Right. Watch out. This could go in, and then this comes up. So you go, okay, definitely want to go short because you got yeah, a short signal right. uh, after it. What about here? So this is uh, the Nasdaq daily. Yeah. So, okay. Again, if you, this was just to show you how strong the two hundred is. So institutions, particularly so here, it moved look. above the two hundred. Exactly. Well, it tried to go through, through it, and it didn't. Yeah, is the main point. Yeah. So as soon as it, it uh, came bounced yeah. off the 200, I'm looking for the first buy signal. And you got that. From it, and I yeah. got that. And I'm, we're still in it. Okay. And that's get, confirmed it there. And all the traffic lights are showing yeah. that. So I'll explain what these are in a second. Um, let me explain to everyone a bit more. By the way, do follow both myself and Paresh on LinkedIn because you'll get a lot of uh, information. But it's also a bloody good way of doing due diligence. Um, that's not correct. It's not 17,580. It's over 20,000 followers on LinkedIn and 230,000 on TikTok with a million likes. And my most popular video is 4 million on ChatGPT. Anyway, uh, one of the biggest hedge funds in the world, this video to demystify how to make money. Uh, we don't have a problem telling people what it is we do for the simple reason and no hedge fund does, because when we have to get capital in from pension funds, family offices and the like, we have to explain what we're doing. Nobody says, hey, you look rather attractive, young man. Here, have some money. It doesn't work like that. You have to explain what you're doing. This, for instance, is from Winton Capital. Their asset peak was $58 billion. They're housed in Hammersmith in West London. Okay, and this is one of their charts explaining 
to people what they do. They don't exactly give the exact formula in the same way Coca-Cola gives you a can of Coke, but doesn't, and you can taste it, but doesn't tell you what the exact ingredients are. But they tell you this is what their Coke uh, uh, tastes like. They're looking to observe when trends start. After a lag, I know people freak out when I say lag. They go, no, surely they can see into the future. They're very clever. Let me let you into a secret. No hedge fund manager can see into the future. Uh, We don't have crystal balls or time machines. Contrary to uh, conspiracy theories out there, uh, we cannot time travel. So they see this after a lag because that increases the probabilities. You saw Parrish with his moving averages. There was a lag before getting in. There was the buy signal. I might return to your charts in a second, Parrish, by the way. Uh, there was, then you're buying and you go in and there's a lag and then selling. Okay. I think people can see my ink, can't they? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and then they're, uh, then they're selling. That's literally what they were doing. Now, I had to prove in court, because uh, I was an expert witness in this case, that momentum trading works. I think I might be the first person. That's fat old me. Uh, that's Raj with his wife, Priyanka. Uh, I won't explain who that lady is, so you don't need to know. Uh, and uh, she's a dear friend. And uh, that's us in Vegas after he won the money he sued for 90 million he got 20 i thought he'd get 21 but anyway uh the point is we had to prove in court exactly what i'm telling you that it works and we won trend following is not new nothing i've told you is anything i've invented it is all just copying and riding the coattails of others my favorite trend followers are john w henry who happens to own liverpool football club uh because he's got a british connection as a result of that and Man Group, because they're British, and they do trend following as well. And David Harding, or Sir David Harding now, who's uh, Winton Capital, who I showed you earlier. The most important numbers, I'm going to come to entries in a second, and we're going to come back to uh, the most important numbers. Take a picture of that, and I'll explain this. 15 minutes scan, 12 to 20 products, one screen, one trade per day. Why one trade per day? Well, when you're beginning, that's what I want you to do, and 20 trades per month, because that's one a day. And I'll explain how that's ample, because I want quality over quantity so if we go back to the s p 500 again that's the entry which we'll come to in a second how do we probability stack the entry how did we put the odds in our favor that that might be a good entry even when the odds are in our favor there's no guarantee if there was a guarantee we'd have a hundred percent uh being right okay this is apple again now look got in it dropped off now it's climbing back up to the entry. So even then, there isn't. Um, there was already a long trade, and this just reconfirmed it uh, as well. That's what trading is. And what kind of returns are we looking at? Well, that's the time commitment and the process that I suggest you adopt. You might argue with me, but I think it's a good starting point. And what I suggest people do is, of course, they can do indices. I, If you like indices, the DAX is probably the easiest, I think. Okay. But the reason currencies come up, and you might say, I've never done currencies in my life. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's a stock or an index or a currency because it's all about buying at 100 and selling at 110. That's it. So in the case of uh, currencies, I would suggest either major versus minor or minor versus minor. And if you don't know what a major currency is, it's one of those. Okay. These are pretty good times. I'll bring you in in a second, Parish, to see if you've got your different views on times. Uh, and time frames, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour time frame. That's it. I mean, we're really getting down to business here. Do you want to add to any of that? Yeah. Uh, the time frame is important. You know, you're building a business here. So you're going to be focused on when that business is going to be the most busiest, the footfalls, the greatest. And it's typically when everyone wakes up. So the first couple of hours of the morning, of any market or the closing of any market are typically key. So that's when you want to start looking or opening up, uh, you know, pitch predator and scanning for any opportunities. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, I think, you know, I used to do it until about 11 a.m., but I only did it till 11 a.m. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody said that's the, you know, it always becomes self fulfilling. By the way, Tesla. Now, again, I want to make this point that we're not cleverer or, can see into the future. If you look at Tesla and you look at the the, the right hand side, can you see my mouse moving, Parash? Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Now that was the long trade. Then Tesla's just bloody exploded upwards. Now those now this is interesting. Those who know my investments 
because they follow me on Telegram or TikTok, will know I sold out. I bought into Tesla in about January, then sold out about a couple of months ago because I wanted to ease out of some of my long positions. And it was, you know, it was, I don't know, what was it this year? 100%? Whatever ridiculous return it gave this year gave. And I thought, right, I want to ease out. Two months ago, I said, look, we need to get some of these uh, equity positions reduced. However, the trades could still continue, even if the investment in Tesla didn't, because the Mm. trading is completely different. It is purely based on momentum. So still being able to make money out of Tesla on the trades, perfectly uh, happy with that. Great. Um, um, go back to go. Just go back to one second. To Tesla, yeah. Yeah, for anyone, it doesn't matter. But we'll, as you're on that, it makes more sense to speak about Because Alfredo is asking a question about comparing different time frames. It's not, not so much that we're comparing different time frames. But what I do is, again, to assist with the probability second, is try and understand what is happening in the long term uh, the great so if you go to the daily time frame on this alpha uh, yeah. and it's daily yeah oh. let me just zoom that daily. Back. whoops yeah. daily yeah yeah so look daily this looks like it's going uh that's the daily that's the daily in in yeah, yeah since october it looks like an uptrend yeah but if we go back to the slightly longer for the for the six months or a year so just zoom out again yeah it's pretty much sideways. Yeah. So yeah. for Tesla, for instance, I'm just thinking, well, is it at the top of the range? Do I want to take a, a uh, and then I'll look at the moving average, just answer Alfredo's question. So it's about synchronizing timeframes as well. So if something's looking good in a, in a, yeah. in a longer time frame, and I've got the same signal in a short time frame, I feel confident that this is probably going to go in the same direction. Well, so. I, I sort of look at it slightly different because um, for me, the issue is if you go, um, you want something which is what we're we looking at. Where's it gone? I think I lost it. Was it the 30 minute? 30 minute. I'm okay. looking for ones where it's smoother. So I'm looking for the time frame where the movements are a lot smoother. And you can see here, it's, I mean, you know, it's smooth. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not going up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's what I try and teach students. So yeah. for me, I look at time frames. Uh, on the basis of okay, well, why did I choose the thirty-minute time frame? Because the thirty-minute time frame was just moving yeah. nice and smoothly, so that I'm more likely, hopefully, to catch a wave, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if it was wah, 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 well, yeah. guess what? The algorithm could apply itself to it, but it's going to get wrong-footed. It's a bit like driving. I give this example: Ferrari up a mountain. You're going to wreck the car, but it doesn't mean it's a rubbish car. Um, so it was looking for that, and that's why for me the thirty-minute one made more yeah, sense. No, we're we're on the same page. I'm saying exactly. Yeah. I'm just looking at t- longer time frame to understand what is happening. Sure. Broader. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I'll come back to some more on there. Um, uh, I want to come back to what I've I got currencies because we actually haven't mentioned any of those, uh, like New Zealand dollar and all the rest of it and, and why. And by the way, the New Zealand dollar tends to be a lot easier to trade than most things for some reason, most of the time. But is it worth it? Is all of this effort worth it? There's my mum. I always say she makes an honorable visit. I love this picture because I have no idea why the king is bowing down to me, but he was. So what can I say? Uh, the road to returns. So this is conventional wisdom is you shouldn't lose more than 1% of your total capital on a trade. So if it goes from the entry to a stop loss. Now, actually, the fact of the matter is that's true if you're a hedge fund or half a percent even because you've got a ton of capital. Most private investors will probably increase that number a little bit. And that's fine as long as you know what you're doing. Now, let's. this actually came about Let's say you haven't got twenty thousand pounds. Okay, most people shouldn't start with twenty thousand pounds. They should start with zero on a demo account. The whole point of a business plan is: well, let's look to where you might get to eventually. Okay, where might you get to eventually? Well, if it works out, you will find yourself by hook or by crook twenty thousand pounds. So, with this, um, when I first got into trading, Bill Lipschitz, the global head of forex trading that I mentioned earlier. Uh, who was in my book, Mind of a Trader, said to me, okay, that's fine. Let's work out a business plan, whether this is worth your effort. And we worked out a hypothetical 20,000 pounds. I was a student at university at the time when I met him. And the reason I met him is because I thought, if I want to go into trading, I better meet the world's best traders, which is how I met David Kite, who Parrish used to work for back in the day. Maximum loss per trade, 200 pounds. So 1% of 20,000 would be 200. This is his business plan to work out whether I do this. And we said, well, if we can get a win-loss ratio, just win a bit more than a 50-50 coin, 
Okay, forget winning streaks and losing streaks. Any idiot can put up, oh, look, I always win. All right. Um, and then 60 40, right? Uh, we did that. And he, I said, well, fine, I'll have an average loss of 200, but we're going to add to winners. So he said, you should get an average win more than your average loss because you're adding to winners. As we said, winners add to winners. I said, okay, fine, I'll go with your numbers. I'll go with your numbers. And I said, well, what will happen if I do 100 trades? And then it blew my mind because he said, well, you'd make 60 times 300 pounds, 18,000 pounds. So I said to him, right, tell my parents I'm leaving university. I'm dropping out. I don't want to be a barrister, uh, uh, which is what I was training to be. I want to just trade. I want to sit in my underpants all day long, eating tacos and nachos uh, by a computer I could see into the future and just trade. Of course you would if that's what you saw. And he said, well, hang on. You're not going to make this because you've got these losses for a start. And I said, yeah, OK. I still net profit of £10,000 per 100 trade. So you can imagine I was getting crazy. I was a student. I'd never seen this kind of money. I grew up in Leeds where I was born and no silver spoon in my mouth, all the rest of it. So I went crazy with this. And I did this calculation i said i can be a day trader because they were the big thing back in the uh back in the day 100 trades per week 50 weeks in a year and by the way we'll do a full q a on any question you've got on the markets or trading in just a second 100 trades per week 50 weeks in a year i said the other two weeks obviously i'd be on my private island with uh, uh putting suntan on richard branson's back i'm sure so five thousand trades per annum that'd be five hundred thousand pounds i said to him on the basis that I make £10,000 for every 100 trades. Half a million pounds a year. Laughing. I'll be the richest man in the world in no time. And he obviously slapped me. Uh, we're talking about Bill Lipschitz. He had global head of Forex trading at Salomon's. And if you were in front of him, you'd ask him exactly what I asked him. How do I get rich, Bill? And I did the whole interview in the book. And I'll give you a free copy of the book at the end of the webinar, the link to download it. He said, keep your day job, Alpesh. And he's so excited I got. Let's say you do 100 trades every six months. That's one a day. One a working day, roughly, which is what I said before. Do one quality trade a day. Uh, 200 trades per annum, that's 20,000 pounds. 200 trades per annum, that's 20,000 pounds. Okay, well, hang on. That's not 500,000. It's not even 90% of it, two-thirds of it, or even 20% uh, 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 of it, or 15% of it. It's not even 10% of it. Okay, it's substantially less. It's about 4% of it, right? So that's still way too much, though, because we still over-egged it. We still over-egged it because we said we're aiming for 500 a month. Okay, 500. If you can do 500 a month, you can do 1,000. If you can do 1,000, you can do 2,000. Your problem then is only scalability. So we still need to work out how do we know when to enter because now we know where the stop losses go and why volatility-based position sizing and how you work out how much money to put into a trade. But we've still got a problem. The, how do we know when to enter? And yeah, that's a good business plan. So why do people fail? Because I said to him, I said, well, that's all good. But if that's true, why isn't everybody rich? And he said, the reason people aren't rich on trading is, well, bad teachers, bad mentors, that's fine because there's just so much gumph out there. And it's got worse thanks to uh, social media. I saw that idiot Greg Secker advert today on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much crap out there from people. So m mine is from Bill Lipschitz, global head of Forex trading at Salomon Brothers. And you can read the strategies in the book, Mind of a Trader, published by the Financial Times. Okay. So, you know, I didn't invent these strategies. I wish I had. I'm not that clever. Uh, Parish, you did invent the strategies which Marble Bar use, and they peaked at $4 billion of assets under management, they're still going strong. Uh, and you've published yours as well. I mean, people sometimes go, oh, if you publish the strategy, surely you'll be out of business. Well, it hasn't happened yet. And I'm not sure how we would be. Because unless you can raise money, which is the real uh, trick, strategies are to a penny. Go to Oxford University Maths Department. They'll give you strategies all day long on trading the market. No worries. They don't have the money to trade them because they're bloody poor academics. Getting money is the hard part. So bad strategies. So I said to him, well, okay, well, that's the problem. How do I know when to get in? And 20,000 is too much. Remember, it's 500 a month. And why 500 a month? Because there's this whole psychology. When people get greedy and overexcited, as I did when I saw that business plan, they mess up. They you might want to add number four there. because it's Sorry, say that again? You might want to add a number four point for reasons for failure, which Go on. is psychology. Which is a psychology. Yeah. Well, that's why I called it Mind of a Trader. It's why I call the book Mind of a Trader, because yeah. that's what I learned from those 10 people. Psychology you was the thing. If you can't execute it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get in your own way. But anyway, yeah. 
No, we'll come to that in a second, but you're absolutely right. It's the psychology part. Well, this is why we created the software, to get rid of the psychology part, which people mess up. Because if you just ask them, and like you do in any company, follow the bloody rules, then you're saying to them, I don't want you thinking or trading by the seat of your pants. Follow the rules so your mind doesn't mess you up, because it does with trading. So here, how do we know when there's an entry there? The exit, How? well, the exit we know because we've got trailing stop loss or a short entry there. When the markets are falling, we can still make money. We can sell at 48 and uh, uh, we can sell at 48.14 and buy at 48.10. Okay, sell at 14, buy at 10, or more likely sell at 1400 and buy at 1000. Okay, so you made 400 points. So how do we know when to enter? So I said to Bill, well, that's all well and good. How the hell do I know how to do this? And he, like you call it probability stacking. He said, well, use multiple indicators. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm a poor student. I didn't have access to Bloomberg terminals, all the rest of it, and, and clever data scientists. How can I use multiple uh, indicators? And he said, well, there's lots of free indicators out there, but don't use them the way the textbooks do and look at multiple timeframes. So this is where the question about timeframes uh, can come in again. And I'll come to that as well. I'm going to publish another poll. Okay. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, all hedge funds look at multiple indicators. In other words, they look at, they'll look at different things, but they probability stack. They don't just look at one thing. They look at multi corroborative evidence. Okay. They don't look at things which are in textbooks because <laughs> that'd be too easy. Uh, and they look at multiple timeframes, like you just said, look at further out timeframes. So what he said is this. Measure how close to the high the price closes in a given period. And I said, okay. I mean, this is just one basis on which we could have done it. We've got 10 different ways of strategies. I mean, we've published them in the books anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, there's actually more than 10. But this is one I'm going to talk about because I'm keeping it simple. One, sorry, and, and I said, well, why? And he goes, well, it's a bit like uh, when you look at where does the price close if it closes near the high it's a bit like those tv auctions i've got 50 anybody give me 60 i've got 60 anybody give me 70 I've got 70 anybody give me 80 there is that probability that momentum because yeah. there's a greater odds if the price closes near the high it's going to move yeah. higher and I said, well, go, sorry sorry if you go it, later on or now whenever if you go back to the slides i showed and where I've, where it's broken the 200 and it's closed at the bottom, you'll see the continuation. So it's exactly what momentum is. Yeah, no, I'll come to that, your slide again in a second. Um, but you're right, it's all about stacking those odds and probabilities. Now, you do it slightly different to me, which is why I wanted you on the webinar to show people there's not just one way. The way I do it is more pure because I just look at my way. You add on moving averages, and I've, we've discussed this, and I said, that's for you, mate. That's fine. It's, yeah. it's, I, it's partly because I didn't create it, not made here. So I'm like, mm, I like my old fashioned way and the way I'm grown up doing it. But so I know a lot of my students love your way and we do videos on it. And I keep telling you, please do me more videos because they love the fact that you add uh, uh, the, the moving average. So the idea is you're adding to the probabilities because you've measured that the price is closed near the high and it's made higher highs and higher lows. So that's three different probability stacks. One, two three and i said well yeah but how am i going to bloody measure this what with a microscope across a thousand positions he goes no there's ample position there's ample tools out there which will do it for you he said look you don't need to know how an engine works in order for grandma to drive it similarly you don't need to know that that's a formula in order to know that th when the price closes near the high there are indicators out there which will start moving upwards and i said okay so what we did is we took he told me take the common indicators so we took common indicators, but use them in a way the textbooks don't. We took momentum indicators, which measured is the price closing near the high, is it making high highs and high lows like the MACD, stochastic RSI, and we probability stacked them across multiple timeframes. That was the thing he said, you know, it's a simple tool. It's like he converted a go-kart and stuck an engine on it, basically. So, because I was a poor student. So what we did is we just said, are they flat to rising? Flat to rising? Are they flat to rising okay so it's that point there that you want to be looking at and getting in and not just one indicator but multiple indicators multiple time frames so one multiple indicators here we use the MACD stochastic RSI two multiple time frames so that's my probability stacking on top of that you perish out the 200 period moving average um, yeah. And we might incorporate that in and, and, and steal your idea and, and, and say, <laughs> right, we're going to add that in. And uh, the other thing we did, and Bill was absolutely correct on this, is PC. 
And PC is price confirmation. Has the price made a two-period high? So that was it. Every time that green arrow turns up, it means there's multiple indicators, multiple time frames, flat to rising, and price confirmation. Okay, every time that comes up, like here, there was multiple indicators, flat to rising on multiple time frames, and and price confirmation, i.e., the price made a two-period high, it just made a two-period high there. But look, let's say we got in at two thirty-five. It then dropped to 232. And you're like, oh, no, is it right? Isn't it? But we didn't get mixed up with psychology because we knew, well, no, it's fine. It's not hit the stop loss. So it's fine. And then shoots up. And now we're really fine because it's all the way up there. And that's a better than I expected trade. By the way, if any trade did exactly as I'd expected, uh, or rather, if any trade I could guarantee which what it's going to do, I'd be a trillionaire. Mm. Because obviously, then I'd just put every single penny I have into that. I can't guarantee it was going to do that. I've only got probabilities. If I had guarantees it was going to do that, I'd put in, I'd borrow a billion pounds from the bank and put it into that trade. So I can't guarantee it to even to myself if I could. I do. That's why, again, that probability notion is critically important. And because it's about probabilities and not about certainties, that's why you have stop losses and losers add to losers. Again, I didn't invent that. A hedge fund manager invented that terminology and winners add to winners. Losers add to losers. We're talking trading, not investing. So you can add to uh, losing positions in investing if that's your strategy, but that's a completely different kettle of fish. We're talking trading. Okay. Um, people who do this, now this is the important thing about trading. And you can ask any broker. And this is my talk at Bloomberg uh, a few years ago. And this was what they were. It was incredible. The diversity you get, the democracy you get with trading, which is why there's so many brokers uh, in that area. For me, I launched the fund in 2004 when this came out and I won a competition in the Financial Times to forecast the markets. Those are some of the books I'd written. I developed it when I was at university. I looked like that when I was at university. And there's proof because I'm wearing a red carnation after my last exam. And that's the first office in 2004, which took me, I'm afraid it took me eight years or so to set up the fund after I first met Bill. Eight years. You know why? It wasn't because of his strategies. It took that bloody long to raise the kind of serious money you need for a fund. And part of it got paid for by Merrill Lynch, HSBC and others who used what I'm saying now to you guys, licensed my information and data uh, and paid, in the end, them, Amex, uh, Lloyd's it all came to about a million dollars in uh, fees, and that's me at the first set of uh, first set of offices in Linen Hall. By the way, my neighbour is or was back then at Linen Hall the man who you all have seen on TV. He's now the King's um, uh, Lieutenant in the City of London, or in, sorry, not in the City of London, in London. Uh, the Lieutenant, what do they call him? DL Deputy Lieutenant. Uh, represents the king. Um, anyway, it was one hell of an office. Uh, do the right sums. I've written about this many, many times, everything that I've spoken about. Now, this is really important. People say, well, what time frames? Now, I don't mind if you do 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour, you get too few signals. So we did the one hour. And when we did this, 25 trades in a month, roughly, gave it to a bunch of people. They could pick whatever positions they wanted, whatever trades they wanted. I've given you a sample. You can take a picture of that. That's what I'm looking at at the moment. And these are the ones that were set up for this webinar. So you can look at FTSE 100, um, went as a long, and now it's a bit underwater there. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But it was a great one since yesterday. It's been absolutely phenomenal, the FTSE, because um, it was 76.40, and now it's 77.40. So that's 100 points. 100 points on uh, the index. And of course, it goes to two decimal points. So it's it's actually 10,000 points on the uh, FTSE since yesterday. That kind of rally is not the norm, not usual. And it's brilliant when it happens. So these are the ones we're looking at at the moment. They're the ones, um, some of them are, you know, like you saw with the FTSE, it's taking back a bit of what it gave us yesterday, but not much. Uh, so 25 trades ideal in a month okay and that's was the average of when the number of signals you know if you're doing uh this every day 
one a day. It roughly comes to about, on average, 25. Now, on the one hour, I'll tell you why it's the most lucrative. Net pips capture, that's winning minus losing. All right? But there's a massive variance. Some months it'll be zero. Other months it might be 4,000 in a month. All right? Net pips captured. So you've got to be careful with averages. Uh, best win-loss streak, 70 out of 100 trades. I wish it was 100 out of 100. But that was the best win-loss streak, 70 out of 100. Worst, 30 wins out of 100. That doesn't matter, and I'm going to explain to you why. If your typical max loss, entry to stop loss is 50 points, right? And you did $2 a point. Don't do $2 a point. Don't even do one pound a point. There are software companies that want you to do one pound a point because they get kickbacks from brokers and they know you're going to lose that money quickly. And they get a kickback from the brokerage. Don't even do a pound a point. Start off with zero. And if any software company says to you, um, oh, start with a pound, tell them how much of a kickback do you get from the brokerage? And you'll soon see uh, that they're getting brokerage kickbacks. Don't do that. But let's say you did $2 a point. Well, in a month, you'd have two times 2,250. That'd be $4,500 in a month. Sounds fine. Well, no, we said it should be 500 a month. 500 a month. So it shouldn't be $2. It should be 20 cents because we need to protect your assets while you're learning. 20 cents a point. 20 cents a point means you'd be risking $10 on a trade. It's not a bad education, even if you're wrong. Okay. So that's the numbers. That's what we're going for over there. Parish, what did you want to add? Uh, By the way, this is the ideal for me. I hate all this nonsense with classrooms. and Although we've had people say, can we meet? And we do do events, um, free events in Parliament four times a year and stuff. But I prefer now, thanks to post-COVID, I prefer this way of doing things, which is how we came about creating um, Pitt's Predator, creating the software. But before I get into that, Parish, what did you want to add? Uh, well, I only thought if we show the uh, the moving averages slide yeah. again. Let me show yeah. your slides again. Yeah. By the way, this is what the chairman of the world's largest exchange said about the strategies, which are in my book, gets to the heart of the matter of trading by clearly elucidating the methodologies of successful trading strategies. I just took from people like David Kite, your former employer, and people like Bill Lipschitz, uh, and just applied those principles. And those principles were Selma. Those principles were Selma. And then we just shoved it into software to make it easier for staff and then made the software available. Uh, to retail there. Sorry, what did you want me to show? So, yeah. so if you look at each one of those where it either hits like this one, comes off the 200, and you look at that bar that's coming off the yeah. 200, yeah, and it's closed on the high. This is exactly what you're talking about, momentum. So that single bar shows yeah. you the momentum, yeah? Because it's a case, fully it's colored bar. So those who know it, that means it closed exactly. at the high, and then this one nearly closed at the high because there's very little wick, as it yeah. were, on the candle, and there. Yeah. But it didn't yeah. give anything back. It's a point. Yeah, so if you go to the other, the other two, it's a similar story. So every time there's momentum behind it, if you go to the other two uh, slides, just yeah. show that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I see why you like to overlay. And I love it because the students love it. I know the yeah. people using the, the software, they love your, to be honest, I'm not insecure, but they do love your videos more than mine. <laughs> it's uh, all right. Because I've but seen yeah, the feedback. Oh, Paris, I love it. I love how you explained it. You know, um, so it's, yeah 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 that was that was all just want to add it well i guess with this the reason you particularly might have liked that one is because it was is it because the moving average is moving lower does the distance from the signal to the moving average make any difference for you or not i do use that but more of a uh, if it's too far away i too if it's too far away from the two so again it's reversion to the mean happens in oh, yeah you know, then you're expecting it's too far back. away from the 200 i know it's going to go back so i'd probably be cautious if it's okay. too far away from 200. Yeah. and what it what about the direction of the moving average if it's also yeah. moving lower like it did here yeah not so exactly so the, but i look at the 200 for position and i look at the 20 for direction so if you go to that one is the the 20 is actually pointing down, so it got better to do that. All right, let me go back to it then. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, so this one? 20, 20 is pointing down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm happy to go down. And that's so, going down. Oh, okay. I see. So which one do you prefer going down? Do you care if it's the 200 or the 20? I'm which more, is more concerned important. about 20. I'm more concerned about the 20 going down. I agree, because it's more sensitive. Down. Yeah, so we're using it as a momentum indicator anyway. Who was yeah. at the bank you recently went to and said they use exactly this in the bank? Which was the bank? Oh, um, 
The Shah guy. The Shah guy? Uh, it's Cantor Fitzgerald, I think. No, you went to see your friend who was a Shah um, at a bank and he's head trader. He's global head of trading. He used to have an outfit in um, Berkeley Square when he left his first bank and now he's joined another bank. I've forgotten. I meet so many people. Anyway, he's a good friend of yours, apparently. And, you get, it's like, it's like, and you're talking to him about moving averages, funnily enough, and he's global head of trading, and he said, yeah, it's exactly what we do. It's pretty simple. It's a lot simpler than people realize. You talked about yeah. it in the last webinar, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I love this. This is the bit that I liked. It's honestly changed my life. Yeah, That's what I'm looking for. Uh, this is somebody else. So this came from someone else. This is someone else. This is actually the guy who first thought of it. Uh, all of it because he was working at Barclays when I first met him and he said why don't you take your software from the fund and we'll float the company if you can spin out your software uh, we'll float the company and we'll show you how to we'll do the corporate finance uh, if you want to use the software it's Christmas join up uh, get your 2024 sorted out uh, we take in a limited number of licensees and you go there and it is first come first serve otherwise just do it manually Right, what I said before, stop loss, entry, limit order, money management, uh, and adding to winners. Uh, Paris said to me, he goes, I don't want a lot of people signing up because it's Christmas and we handhold yeah. everybody and we really teach them. So um, we don't do that. Tony's got questions. I, I think it, uh, oh, okay, Paris, you've read them, so that's yeah. fine. Have we got any other questions? Any slides you want me to show? Anything you want me to do? Uh, then let me know. Uh, we, 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 I'll put the little offer up up there. Uh, but for those who want to use the software that we use and we spun out of the fund, my eventual ambition is to get some venture capital investment into it. Uh, and my wife is global head of venture capital at the British government within the British government. So sort of get lots of venture capital into it uh, and then make it more global. We've got about 800 people using the software and uh, we do a 30-day money-back guarantee and all of this. And we have got a wonderful wall of love and reviews, which I will show people. Uh, and they can look at all these testimonials. Uh, okay. And that's not all just for Pitt's Predator. It'll be a whole variety of stuff. But if you want to see the Pitt's Predator stuff, uh, if you go here, alpishpatelreviews.com, you can see the video reviews as well, because some of them are so fantastic, um, particularly Ario, who built two... $10 million companies out of it. That is not typical. It is not typical you go around creating two $10 million companies. So we did video interviews with people because we said, you know what, this is too good. People aren't going to believe how good all this is. Uh, and then put them into um, case studies as well. I'm going to add to those case studies because we just created some more case studies in actual fact with all of this. So me, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, go on. There's a couple of questions coming through. And yeah, go on for it. So look, it's Right now, we are speaking to, uh, you know, a, a particular broker who has... Well, read out the question. People might not see it. Okay, sorry. So, Abdul is asking, what would be the best way to acquire more capital, for instance, yeah? And... Uh, How to build a track of record for investors. Um, yeah. Let me answer that first, Parash, sure. and you've got different ideas, because we've got different ideas on capital raising. Uh, friends and... Like any business, friends and family right? So you need rich friends and rich family. So really your question is, how do I get rich friends and rich family? It is not what people think, which is, oh, if I get a really good track record, will you give me some money? No, because you're not my friend, you're not my family. Okay. There are, however, um, hedge fund seeding uh, institutions. There are uh, other entities out there. But personally, my view and how I did it, I built my own capital up and then I went to a couple of wealthy friends. But Parish, you've got a different perspective on this. Well, I think, well, uh, yeah, I have in that uh, that we are speaking, as we are speaking to you, uh, are. yeah, to a particular company that will allow traders to sign up to a challenge, which will develop your track record in any case, and then they will fund you in any case because they're backed by a hedge fund. So, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to make the introductions you know but it comes through pips ultimately so yeah sign up and then we can make those instructions but it's a journey what you got to understand is not going to be a get rich quick scheme you've got to put in the hours got to create a trade plan and people will be watching you to make sure you're you are managing risk ultimately that's what you are a risk manager 
Yeah, I mean, there's other ways. I've got people who said, I want to set up my own fund. I said, well, I'll, and actually this past week, I put somebody in touch with lawyers, accountants, compliance officers. Our first one was based out of Cayman. It was equity long short. We used Walkers in Cayman Islands. We used Simmons and Simmons in London. Uh, PwC were the auditors. Uh, uh, who was the administrator? It was Sitco. Sitco out of Ireland were the administrators. So we went for tier one names across the board, but it was really literally friends and family. It wasn't family. I don't have a rich family. It was friends. Uh, and we're going back to 2004 now, who put the initial capital in. Uh, but for those, and I've now made this available, I'm pretty sure on my program, uh, I've put a list of every single European family office. And I've said, if you're on Pitts Predator and you've got a track record, here's a list of all the family offices that our prime broker gave us, because prime brokers sometimes help with capital raising, and you can approach them. Feel free. And there's about a thousand family offices in Europe. Um, so the Excel spreadsheet's on there for people who are on the program uh, to get access to. So they get, you know, I don't want to slow them down, I give them access to that, and they can see it. Uh, and if they want to set up their own fund, they can. By the way, as well as the software, I have a 12-week mentoring program and a 30-day one. It's actually yours for life, and it's updated every week, yeah. in actual fact. So 12 weeks, uh, it's actually yours for life, and it's, like I say, updated every week. Um, but the benefit of it is, and we've got people from all these countries, uh, the benefit of it is is that you've got the education if you want it. Most people just read the manual. They download, install the indicator and read the manual. And then they speak to me and Parish, and they've got unlimited access to me uh, and Parish for as long as he wants to give them <laughs> unlimited <laughs> access. But um, they've got unlimited access uh, to me to get... Because what we found is when you're training people up and teaching them like, we do, like I did when I first set up the, my fund, if they can't speak to a human, then you're just giving them a bloody textbook. So we wanted to do more than just give software and say, go away. Uh, and we, and the reason I say to people, come to LinkedIn, is because there just isn't the stuff out there. Uh, there isn't people of credibility out there. Uh, my ambition is to turn this into a billion-dollar tech company because I think it's tech. Uh, this is fintech. Um, so someone... Um, uh, so, so, oh, um, Ed uses Sierra charts. Yeah, that's fine. You can continue using Sierra charts. We use MT4 because it's widely available. Uh, and we get people who use Bloomberg terminals and have this on a separate screen. We have people who use, you know, XYZ and the meta stock, and they put this on a separate screen. Uh, so it, it's not a conflict with any other charting package that you might use. So, Presh, did you want to say something? No, uh, Nyla was asking about Rolls Royce and why you don't like it, but I was just saying. Mean uh, I can't remember if I said I didn't like it. I just can't remember what I said about it. I'll have another look at Rolls Royce. Okay. Um, anyway, you can have a look at pitsrotor.com. You can see that. Any other questions? Uh, oh, Parish, I know we've overshot. We try to keep yeah. this to an hour, exactly an hour, so we didn't take too long. But are there other questions? Are there things you liked, you didn't like, the things you want me to explain? Oh, I do six live webinars for students every Saturday. 11 a.m. on stop losses, 12 o'clock on entries, one o'clock on uh, limit orders, two o'clock on money management, three o'clock on trading psychology, and four o'clock on adding to winners. But this is very much about trading and those who want to trade. Uh, and that's why we created the software. So if you want to be my apprentice, I love this. Copy the billionaires. I mean, even if some of them are unhinged. Uh, he doesn't like immigrants all of a sudden, so uh, sorry, mate. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. Uh, oh, and this is important. Uh, I probably, because people often ask me, how long does it take? I always do the onboarding myself. There's a whole bunch of you signed up, so I'm going to do the onboarding email shortly when I get off the computer. So give me the you know, an hour or so. Um, what happens in the onboarding is I do the first video because whether it's three months or one month or six months or nine months, when you turn around and do one of these where you say it's been life altering, I want to be there to say I was there on day one uh, for you. So this is roughly what happens. Um, we get about 10% who in the first 30 days decide it's not for them and there's a full money back. We give them two packages to keep, even if in the 30 days they say it's not for them, which is signed copies of my two most recent trading books and separately a trading journal and all sorts of other goodies. So whatever happens, they've got all of that. If you go here, you can download a copy of Mind of a Trader from, from there. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's the philosophy behind it and what we're doing. And thanks to Parish. 
we also, because it was his idea, I think it was your idea, we did um, installments we as did. well. Whoops, there we go. We did installments. So I, yeah. and I want people around the world. I mean, I think given that there are, um, if you look at, say, a brokerage like CMC or IG, those are both billion-dollar companies. So there's no reason why software which goes across brokerages can't be a billion-dollar software. That's my view on this, and that's my ambition. Uh, go for it. Go for it. Anything else? Any other questions? Can this David, be done? Yeah, David, it can. We have about 30% of people who, for VAT, um, we, we issue a VAT invoice, and they can do it through a company. Absolutely fine. Oh, you've already answered it, Pressure. Brilliant. At the same time you were speaking, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alexander, do you think AI could be used in trading in a similar way um, you've used it in investing? So, Alexander, we, we started a long time ago when I was creating the indicator. I put it through Microsoft Azure. Um, and we probably need, so they've got, on Microsoft Azure, you can use Microsoft's AI machines because you can't afford it yourself, you know, so you've got to use all those, you've got to use theirs. Um, and we did some pattern recognition. So in actual fact, with the indicator, what you're seeing is not just multiple indicators, multiple time frames, flat to rising. Uh, what you're also seeing, and price confirmation for the signal, let me pull that up. What you're also seeing is uh, a library of pattern recognition, which was then used to determine uh, which signals uh, we should keep, as it were. Which, So if we take this in sterling yen, okay, 30-minute bars, uh, uh, th so that is not just because there was price confirmation, multiple indicators, multiple time frames, flat to rising. Uh, so there was momentum from this time frame, but further out time frames. It was also because there was a pattern recognition library where that would be similar to what it would have seen. You know, the last 10 to 20 um, bars would be similar, not identical because that would be spooky, similar to what it had seen before a good rise. Uh, now, AI was used for pattern recognition. If you think about it, you might say, well, wait a minute, pattern recognition isn't really AI. It's just matching stuff up. Whatever you want to call it, it was done on... Microsoft Azure, and we probably should build up an even bigger library and do more. Um, so yes, I think your answer is yes, but we'll probably end up doing it incrementally, step by step. We've got a version five coming out, which will have more of those AI generated Microsoft Azure pattern recognition signals in it. So yeah, there is a version five coming out. Um, but the price will be fixed. Whoever signs up today, by the way, it's a one-off price for life. You, there's no subscription. So whoever joins up today, the price rises won't make a difference uh, in the future to you guys. You you will have paid once and that's it, whether it's installments or whatever. Um, we do plan to get to, I think, uh, I want to double it from where it is now uh, and the, the, to get it closer to five to 6,000 uh, and eventually get it to, like we have with Bread Investments Program, closer to 15 to 20,000 uh, only because we've got global ambitions and there's a lot of expenditure which goes into this which at the moment I fund all of it which I'm happy to do and give it at a discount because it's the venture capital type I've got to go I'm yeah you've got to run you got to, you switch off you close your computer I will see you all later thank you all for very much you switch off. and I'm going to get going as well um uh, uh, uh who have we got um